Today I want to tell you about the benefits of spraying with a hopper gun for Styro Spray 1000. It's a complete hard coat system that doesn't have to be sprayed through a plural component system to be sprayed. The system to spray with is a, high, is a hopper gun. Comes out of the box, the hopper, your reservoir, the box that contains the spray gun and some of the accessories that I've already pulled out. Real quickly, just to familiarize you with the gun, you have the tip retaining ring. We're going to unscrew. You have the air adjustment for the pin, the air pin inside. We're going to take that out. And that's pretty much it for the, for the hopper gun. So to tell you a little bit more about the hopper gun, it really works very simply. It works with uh, the air pin here that we're going to put in and usually comes assembled. This is the adjustment knob on the back which is going to control the travel of the pin and the amount of material that we're spraying because there's a couple of ways we're going to control the amount of the styro spray that we're going to apply and the tip. The tip comes with, the gun comes with three tip sizes. You want to use the smallest one there, the little eighth inch. Simply just lay it on top and push it on with the retainer ring and just screw it hand tight. There's no real reason to torque it down real hard. And that's it. That's pretty much the hopper gun. Okay, the assembly for the hopper gun. The hopper gun is going to be put on. We use a retaining ring here. It's going to be pressed on and then just tightened up. And if you push hard enough, you can get it to go over the top of the, of the hopper. Inside the kit, you'll also find a rubber adapter, which you really don't need for this operation, we found out. But for making the hopper gun work properly, it's always best to have, if you look at the top of the hopper, it's going to have a reservoir loading in and it's going to have a closed end. It's always best to have the open in towards you when you're spraying down. If you're spraying flat or up, then you can turn the hopper around, just keep it from the liquid styro spray from seeping out. Now, something that's really important is how to control the amount of styro spray that you're spraying. There's three things. One is temperature. The best temperature range to spray with is 70 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have colder temperatures, the liquids become a little thick and they tend to spatter. And so the best way is to keep it within that range. The next thing is the travel. Now I'm going to take this hopper gun up so you can see a little closer up with me. If this is screwed all the way in, the handle doesn't travel very far and the amount of styro spray getting to the flow is less. More, screw it all the way out. If you have it too far out, it's going to spatter as well. And the next thing is airflow. On the bottom of the hopper gun you see is a male fitting. There's a 90 degree adapter that comes with it that helps you out. We're going to screw that on. And to that there's going to be a cutoff valve. When, it's lined, when the, the handle is parallel with the valve, it's on. And when it's 90 degrees to it, it's off. Okay? So we're going to turn it off to put it on. And there's a quick disconnect that kind of comes with this too that kind of helps make your life easier as well. So we're going to spray, and then at the end of the day, when we're ready to break this thing down, it's the reverse. What we're going to do is, well, this is still attached to the gun, so we're going to pour out all the liquid styro spray. We're going to take it off. We're not going to clean this. We're going to go ahead and let the styro spray cure in that. Then we're going to break the gun down. Don't throw the gun in solvent. Now, some of the best solvents to use are delimonene, which is really orange extract oil, or you can use uh, lacquer thinners to do it. MEK and acetone will work, but you really want to get them dry because if they're wet, they'll tend to make the styro spray uh, cure a little faster in there. So because of the O-rings, we don't want to put them in, dip them, and soak them in that. You want to strip the gun down. You want to take the tip off here, and then the air pin that we talked about earlier, we want to take that out. It should just push right out. And you're going to be wearing gloves this whole time too. You're going to take a cloth and you're going to wipe the inside of this out and you take a little thin layer of Vaseline and coat the inside of this. And on the air pin, we're going to take that and wash it. Now this has O-rings as well, so we don't want to leave this soaking because you'll destroy the O-rings. We want to make sure that all the openings are clear, the uh, application tip, 
and then the entrance for the air supply. We're going to put a little Vaseline on that, and then we're going to return them to the gun. And that's pretty much it so far as what we have to do to clean the gun and service the gun. Of course, when spraying the gun, you always want to dress up. You want to wear gloves, apron, and also the air supply. You want to make sure that you use a full face air supply that supplies air to your nose, mouth, and eyes for the best results. This is the best thing to work with. The best thing to do is to look at the material safety data sheets that are available and also check the dates to make sure you have the most current version of the material safety data sheets. That's about it. Pretty simple. Good luck.